I'm seeing it for the first time. I think it's, it's fascinating as much as I had been told about how wonderful it is. Uh, I'm truly impressed. What it means, I, you know, it means a lot of things. Uh, it makes you uh, think about the marvelous, incredible structure of the human body, its complexity, the way in which uh, all of these things uh, function, the uh, interrelationships of the organ systems, etc. For me, um, as a physician, and most specifically as a uh, forensic pathologist, I've seen these things in conjunction with all kinds of cases, medical malpractice, homicide, product liability, wrongful death, motor vehicular accidents, uh, airplane crashes, etc. But to see um, these things uh, with a sophisticated degree of detail, uh, that kind of detail I've never seen before and I don't believe has ever been accomplished by anybody. I've seen, you know, I've seen parts of bodies such as this, and this is a very, very nice simulation. I mean, the, the coloring, you get the appearance of stripped flesh. Yeah, just this is an overall picture: lung and heart, liver and spleen, kidney there, kidney there. Here's the stomach. Um, here are the blood vessels coming down. Here's a part of the intestine. Here's another part of the intestine, and going into the rectum. Here's the urinary bladder right here, and the ligaments associated with the major muscle uh, bodies in the thigh and in the calf. A marvelous, marvelous dissection. Oh yes, oh yes, it's, it's very well done. Here, you got the 12 cranial nerves uh, that are really part of the central nervous system. But you see some of them continuing down at the base of the brain. <clears throat> and then the spinal cord, which is a continuation of the brain, central nervous system. And then uh, all of the mm, spinal nerves that go out from the spinal cord. And it's one or more of those nerves, by the way, that become impinged, compressed by a ruptured intervertebral disc. And that's what gives you the pain and the compromise of mobility, et cetera. And that's why then the surgeon goes in and tries to uh, take away a certain amount of disc or bone in order to alleviate that pressure. And then you have the nerves that continue out into the arms and the nerves coming all the way down into the feet and up here into the hands and fingers. It's a fantastic fa uh, dissection. And that shows you the hemorrhage there where a person has had a stroke. The dark red is the hemorrhagic area. That's a massive stroke. And then we would try to determine whether it's due to hypertension, high blood pressure, whether it's due to a ruptured mm, atherosclerotic vessel, you know, hardening of the arteries, just like the coronaries, the cerebral arteries, or whether it's due to a vascular malformation like an aneurysm or an arteriovenous fistula, abnormal connection between artery and vein. Uh, we would look to see the, the etiology. And sometimes they have medical legal significance. What if this guy had been in a fight or an argument? What if he had been involved in an automobile accident? So, you know, all, all these things have, for, for me too, in addition to being fascinated, just as a physician from the standpoint of the anatomy and pathology, uh, the medical legal significance of, of these kinds of um, the portrayals uh, is, is fantastic, just fantastic. So this is the heart that has been cleaved right down the middle. And, um, and it gives a discussion about the valves and, and what produces heart murmurs uh, and so on. This is incredible. You're looking at the, the tiniest the capillaries. It's, it's a mesh. And then you begin to get an idea of uh, why so much of the body it is fluid because it's contained within all of these tiny vessels. Because see, you couldn't do this through dissection. There's no way in the world you could do yeah. this through dissection. This is the pancreas. I always think of it as a pirate's gun. <laughs> uh, the handle is over here, as was always in my mind, and it, the tail goes over toward the spleen. But, but see, they've gotten rid of the tissue and left only oh, the vasculature. It's fascinating. And here, they've done similarly um, with the the, the vessels of the, this one is the heart and lungs. You see, you're looking at this person straight on in. Right lung, left lung, and there's the heart. Here's the aorta, the big red vessel coming off. Uh, the blue will represent venous blood. Red is arterial blood. So they, they've shown you, and look how, look here again. All the lung tissue is gone, and you have only the, the vasculature. 
If you get an aneurysm up here, it's, it's usually a different kind, huh. sometimes from trauma, sometimes uh, associated with uh, rare diseases um, and, and conditions, including Marfan syndrome, uh -huh. which Abe Lincoln was supposed to have had and so on. But I'd say 90% of uh, aneurysms are due to hardening of the arteries and, and most, the most advanced arteriosclerosis um, in nine out of every ten people will begin to occur here. That's because of, of how we stand and the gravitational uh, flow of blood. And you see right here is where if they make the diagnosis, they go in and they put in graphs right. that, that they'll, they'll, exactly, they'll hook it up there, swing it around and hook it up here. They've really, they've really dramatized this. This person is very anti-smoking. I've never seen, I've never seen a lung that black. <laughs> and these aren't um, painted. But and, I, and I grew up in Pittsburgh too. But I, it, the smokers who die, they don't die. It's not the carbonaceous pigment. It's the development of emphysema and then the development of bronchogenic carcinoma, cancer of the lungs that, that kills them. The, the carbonaceous deposition, that, that, that's part of it, but that's not really, you know, most of it is on the outside and it doesn't do all that much. This, this the alveoli, um, alveolus, singular alveoli, plural, and here they say there are about 300 million of them. They are the air sacs, S-A-C-S, air sacs. And it is at that level, the lining of those sacs and only there where oxygen is taken in and carbon dioxide is given off. It's the only place where you have what is called, to, called as the blood gas exchange. Uh, here they give you, as doctor, I was just saying, this, this woman serially sectioned, uh, uh, we could describe it, and it shows you the subcutaneous fat. Uh, adipose tissue beneath the skin. You see this appearance here. Then you come in and they've cross-sectioned the intestines and then they show you all of this so you can see what the fat looks like and then they have dissected it further removing the internal organs and going back to the vertebral column and, um, and just the uh, little portions. And these are the big muscles, the psoas muscles PSOAS uh, that, that come down into the legs. This is a slice, a horizontal slice through the body, only it's turned up vertically here, but it's a horizontal slice. What you're looking at here is the normal liver. It's smooth, you're looking at the liver from the rear, from the rear. That's the liver from the back, and if you were on the other side, from the front. Over here is a liver of cirrhosis, most often associated with alcohol. It can be caused by other things, but certainly in this country, I would say 90% uh, um, are um, what we call Lenex cirrhosis, named after the Frenchman who first described it. It's the classical kind of um, alcohol-related uh, cirrhosis. You go home tonight and eat a meal, and the fattier, heavier the meal, the more bowel you need, and out it comes from the gallbladder, up through the cystic duct, and then down through the, they call the common hepatic duct, and then into the bowel where it aids and participates in the digestive process. If you have a stone, impacted gallstone, you see, then it may block it. And then you have the loops of small intestine, which may be in a, a full-size man of as much as 24 feet. If you stretch that out, about 24 feet. And then, and then you see where it gets a wider bore, Look over here, right in there. That's the ileocecal area where the appendix comes off. And then see, it's wider going up right colon, going over transverse colon, coming down left <clears throat> colon, and then sigmoid, and then rectum down at the end, and you're looking at the, at the anus at the very end. So you see small intestine, and then into the large intestine. This is a very special and marvelous exhibit.